The next major incident that the books of Sirah mention, the change of Qibla occurs. And the change of Qibla probably occurred around 15 to 16 months after the immigration. And this caused a mini crisis. Why? Because initially, the Prophet ﷺ was told to pray facing Jerusalem, Bayt al Maqdis. And throughout his entire period in Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ continued to pray towards Bayt al Maqdis. It is reported in some of the books, for example, Ibn Sa'd's Tabaqat and Al Hakim's Mustadrak, that whenever the Prophet ﷺ prayed in Mecca facing Jerusalem, he would in fact put the Kaaba in front of him. So he has a double Qibla basically, right? That he would always pray on that one one side of the Kaaba that faces Jerusalem. However, when the Prophet emigrated to Medina, now the Qibla is still Baytul Maqdis. And Medina is due north of Mecca. And Baytul Maqdis is due north of Medina. It's a straight line. And so, if you want to pray facing Baytul Maqdis, you have to turn your back to the Kaaba. But it is still a part of the Sharia. So the Muslims were praying facing Baytul Maqdis. And it is narrated that once when Jibreel came down with some Quran, the Prophet ﷺ expressed his hope to Jibreel that, Oh Jibreel, I wish to pray facing Mecca. He even told this to Jibreel. And Jibreel said that, I am an Abd just like you. And I only come with the Amr of Allah Azza wa Jalla. I can't help you out here. If you want this, make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the Prophet ﷺ began making dua earnestly in tahajjud at night in the day. So much so that he was looking up to the sky. And looking up to the sky is only done in duas at times of extreme distress. But he did it at night when nobody was looking. How do we know he did it? Because Allah revealed it in the Quran. We have seen taqalluba wajhik, your face turning up fis sama, always looking up to the skies. You're always looking up, making dua to Allah. So let it be decreed, we will face you in a direction that you want, that shall please you. So from now on, turn your face in the direction of Masjid al-Haram. And wherever you are, then turn your face in that direction. And when this command came down, this command proved to be a great source of confusion for everyone. The Muslims, the Yahud, and the Mushrikun. Allah says, سَيَقُولُ السُّفَهَاءُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَا وَلَّاهُمْ عَنْ قِبْلَتِهِمُ الَّتِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهَا The Sufaha, the foolish people, will begin questioning, why have they turned away from the Qibla that they were upon? How come they're changing directions? One of the Yahud said, if this man is a prophet, how come he's praying one day facing north and the other day facing south? Why is he changing his mind all the time? Another of them said, that isn't our Qibla good enough for him? We have the best Qibla. Why is he changing it to another Qibla? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا الْقِبْلَةَ الَّتِي كُنْتَ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يَتَّبِعُ الرَّسُولَ مِمَّنْ يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ The only reason that, or one of the main reasons, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا الْقِبْلَةَ الَّتِي كُنْتَ عَلَيْهَا We wanted to test those who followed the Prophet versus those who rejected the Prophet. The Jews then began saying that anybody who faces any direction other than Baytul Maqdis, Allah will never be pleased with him. And Allah will not accept from him. And they said it is a part of piety to face Jerusalem. At this Allah revealed, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّ وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبِلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Piety is not in which direction you face. وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Real piety is what's inside. The spirituality to believe in Allah and the final day. And to give to the poor. And to, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions a whole list of good deeds. Right? Whichever direction you turn, Allah Azza wa Jal is there. Meaning, Allah Azza wa Jal will accept all of the directions you pray, whichever direction the Qibla is, as long as, of course, you are following the commandments of Allah. That if you were to bring every sign to the people of the book, they would never follow your Qibla. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِتَابِعٍ قِبْلَتَهُمْ And you are not going to follow their Qibla. وَمَا بَعْضُهُمْ بِتَابِعٍ قِبْلَةَ بَعْضٍ They themselves don't follow each other's Qibla. The Jews have a Qibla, the Christians have a different Qibla. You have your Qibla and they have their Qibla and Allah Azza wa Jal has chosen the best for you. The authentic reports are very clear and that is that the Prophet prayed Fajr facing Jerusalem and then he prayed Dhuhr facing Mecca. So the commandments came down in the early morning. And so, what used to be the front of the masjid became the back of the masjid. And the Prophet then went to what was the back, 
And from henceforth, it became the front until he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wa Now, those people who prayed dhuhr in the masjid, they went back to their homes. And one of them reached the famous masjid that we now call Masjid Qiblatayn. The Sahabi prayed dhuhr in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid and he strolled back, maybe he did some other errands. By the time he got back home, they were already praying Asr. So when he saw them praying Asr, he was shocked because he wanted to get there before to tell them. But they're in the middle of the prayer. So he cried out from the back of the masjid that, O oh people of the masjid, I have just come from the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid and I prayed with him dhuhr and he was praying facing Mecca. The command has come to pray facing Mecca. So this was the masjid, Masjid Qiblatayn, the Imam of that masjid and the Sahaba in that masjid. And they're all Sahaba. That was the masjid where they turned around and the Imam walked straight through the entire Sufuf and everybody basically turned around where they were, right? And that's why it was called Masjid Qiblatayn. When the Prophet ﷺ turned the Qibla in his own masjid, whatever was the back became the front. The Prophet ﷺ then commanded that the back of the masjid, which used to be the front, be covered up by a shade. When the Prophet ﷺ built the masjid, it was no roof. Eventually, they put a roof of date palms, as we said, but it was not waterproof. And even in the sixth, seventh year of the Hijrah, it rained in Ramadan and the Prophet ﷺ was praying and the whole floor was mud. And he lowered his head straight into the mud for sajda. Right? And Anas said, Wallahi, I saw the mud on his face and his nose when he went into the sand. So up until much later on, then the roof finally became watertight. 